Are you ready for a story? Yeah. All right. Come and join us. <laughs> All children are welcome. Okay. Now, this is a true story, and it starts thousands and thousands of years ago. There was the most wonderful and powerful being in the whole universe. And he had created a beautiful world full of animals, plants, flowers, mountains, oceans. It was magnificent. But only one thing was missing, and it was the one thing he wanted more than anything else to make his world perfect. You know what that was? He wanted a family to love and to share this wonderful world. So this amazing being, Father God, created people, a man named Adam and a woman named Eve, and they had a great life together, laughing, eating, working, loving one another. But then a very sad thing happened. Adam and Eve made some bad choices. Have you ever made some bad choices? Hmm? <laughs> well, <laughs> they listened to the voice of a really evil guy named Satan, and he told them, you don't have to obey your dad. He doesn't know anything. You can just do whatever you want. Well, that's not a very good idea. No, you're right, Papa Hap. That's not a good idea. <laughs> but Adam and Eve listened to that bad guy, Satan, and they disobeyed their father, and they made a big mess. Father was so sad because that mess spread everywhere, and people did terrible things. But Father loved his family so much. Even though they made a big mess, he promised, one day I will send help. I will take care of that bad guy, Satan, and I will rescue you, forgive you, and give you a fresh start. I love you. So the people waited and waited. Have you ever had to wait a long time for something? It's hard to wait, isn't it? <laughs> well, God's family waited a long time, and they still did bad things. And they would say, Father, help us. Hurry up. He reminded them he was going to send help. He said, I love you. I'm going to send help. More time passed. Things were very, very hard and very dark and very bad. Then, one day, in a tiny village called Nazareth in the land of Israel, something extraordinary happened. It was just an ordinary day. Dads were working, moms cooking, kids playing, when suddenly a bright, shining being appeared, an angel. Do, do you believe in angels? Yeah. Yes. Well, this angel named Gabriel was sent straight from heaven, and he had a very important message. And who do you think that message was for? Maybe the oldest man in the village, like Papa Hap? Hmm? Or the wisest woman in the village? Maybe like Nana Dye. No, no. Angel Gabriel came to a girl, a shy teenage girl named Mary. She was busy planning her wedding to a man named Joseph, and she was shocked to see an angel come to her. I mean, wouldn't you be shocked? Well, Gabriel said to her, Good morning, Mary. You're so beautiful with God's beauty. But Mary just trembled. What did the angel mean? Then he said, Mary, don't be afraid. God has a wonderful surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus. He will be great, the son of the Most High, and he will rule as a king over all forever. Now Mary was really confused. She asked, but how can I have a baby? I've never even slept with a man. It's impossible. Gabriel replied, Oh, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the child will be called Holy, the Son of God. Mary 
Nothing is impossible with God. Oh, Mary was just overwhelmed, but she said, Okay, I, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you said about me come true. And the angel left. Mary just shook her head. Why would God choose her to be the mother of the one who would finally rescue all people? She was scared, but very excited. The wait was over. Help was coming. And she, Mary, would give birth to the king who would save God's family. But would anybody believe her? What, what would Joseph say? Oh, help, God, she whispered. But God was already working to smooth the way. He knew Joseph would struggle believing an angel had appeared to Mary with this startling news. So God gave Joseph a powerful dream. Do some of you have dreams from God? Well, in this dream, an angel appeared to Joseph and said, Joseph, don't wait to take Mary as your wife because the power of the Holy Spirit has put a baby boy inside her and you're to name him Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. Joseph woke up. He was overwhelmed, <laughs> but he knew God had spoken, and Joseph was a good man who loved God, so he obeyed. He quickly married Mary, and he trusted God to help them plan for this miraculous birth. The baby would be born at Mary's house with the best midwife, that's like a doctor. And her mom would be there to help. Oh, it would be, they would have fresh water. Joseph would make a clean, comfy cradle, good food. They wanted everything to be perfect for the birth of such an important baby, the savior of the world. But it didn't happen that way at all. Everyone in the land was ordered by the cruel Roman emperor to travel to their family's hometown for a census. And Joseph and Mary had to go 90 miles to Bethlehem. That's like going all the way to Indiana, but not on a smooth highway at all. It was very hilly, rocky, dangerous path on a donkey. You mean they didn't have a minivan or even a car? No, no Papa, no minivans back then, no. And there were robbers and lots of wild animals all around, and it took seven long cold, rainy, windy days. But finally, they arrived in Bethlehem, so tired and hungry. And Mary knew it was just about time for the baby to come. Oh, she was so glad they could get a nice, warm room at a hotel. So Joseph knocked on the doors of several places, but everybody said, no room here. All rooms are taken. Joseph was desperate. Please, Somebody help us. And a kind farmer heard their cry, and he said, well, they could lie down in his nearby barn. It was quite smelly, dirty, and yes, I mean, animals would be there. Would you like that? Well, not me. I've no. lived in barns and seen them. They're not very nice. No. I mean, could this be where the king was to be born, the savior of the world, in a filthy barn with animal poop and grimy straw? <laughs> yes, right there in that cold, smelly barn, Christ, our Savior, was born. Mary gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in strips of cloth and laid him gently, oh, not in a beautiful cradle, with clean blankets. Nope. She laid him in a messy feeding box, a manger, where the donkeys ate. For he, Jesus, is a humble king. Our God became one of us, born to save us all, no matter who we are. Well, meanwhile, in a field near Bethlehem, shepherds were just sleepy, hanging with their sheep, when suddenly the whole dark field blazed bright with the glory of God, and they were terrified. An angel appeared and said, Don't be afraid. Today, I am bringing you the best news ever. For in Bethlehem, the Savior, King Jesus, is born for all. 
and you'll find him wrapped in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. And all at once, the whole sky was filled with a huge number of beautiful angels singing glory to God in the highest. And the shepherd said, let's go see for ourselves. God has finally sent the Savior. Yes, the Savior had come. And now the Father can have a family to love, share life with, and show the world how good God is. The end.